Welcome to online worship at Mayville United Methodist Church. My name is Steve Delano, and we're so glad that you've chosen to worship with us on this, the fourth Sunday of Advent. We will be having an in-person Christmas Eve service at 7.30 p.m. on December 24th. We hope you can join us. Let us now worship together. Today we light four candles. The first candle is called hope, and it is a reminder that God's promises are true. The second candle is called peace, God's gentle loving peace for our lives. The third candle is called joy because of God's absolute presence in our lives. The fourth candle is called love because of God's great love for us. Come, all is ready. Let the light of these candles called hope, peace, joy, and love bring brightness to your spirits. Today's New Testament reading is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, verses 39 through 55. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to the Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy, and blessed is she who be believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her 
by the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me, and, his, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. Today's scripture text is a terrific passage for us to examine as we await Jesus' birth. It is full of emotions, the emotions of Mary, most likely a young teen, probably 13 years old, who has just been visited by the angel Gabriel, told she would bear the Son of God, and then, become, and then became pregnant. And the emotions, the emotions of Elizabeth, Mary's older cousin who is well past childbearing age and now six months pregnant with her first child. If any of you have ever been pregnant or been around someone who is pregnant, you know that it's very natural for emotions to change and even be magnified during this time. I can only imagine what it feels like for a woman during this joyful yet stressful time. But I do envision emotions such as joy, anticipation and excitement, but also anxiety, fear, doubt, and even sadness. As the passage begins, Mary has traveled to visit her cousin Elizabeth. She had just learned that she is pregnant, that the Holy Spirit had come over her, that God's power overshadowed her. And she immediately sets out to see her cousin. Had she shared that she is pregnant with her parents? Would they understand if she told them that she had been visited by an angel and become pregnant shortly thereafter? She was engaged to Joseph, but not yet married. Would her parents believe her? Most likely, Mary went with haste to see her cousin because she was scared, maybe even confused and conflicted. It was not a short journey as she traveled from her home in Nazareth to Elizabeth's home in Ein Karim, probably 80 miles over three mountain ranges. It would have been a nine or 10 day walk for her. Mary knew that Elizabeth was pregnant. How can we be sure of this? When the angel had visited Mary, he told her in verse 36, and now your relative Elizabeth is in her old age, has conceived a child, and this is the sixth month for her who is said to be barren. So Mary journeys to see Elizabeth. What did she hope for from Elizabeth? It's even very possible that Mary had kept the pregnancy a secret. She, the passage doesn't tell us, but we can guess that she was looking for a sympathetic ear from Elizabeth, who was also experiencing a miraculous pregnancy. Mary was probably looking for someone to share this unbelievable story with, someone who might possibly believe her. Yet to Mary's surprise, Elizabeth greets her with great joy. The moment she sees Mary, she knows that Mary is pregnant. 
Remember, Mary is just a week or so into her pregnancy, yet Elizabeth knows it. Not only that, she knows that Mary is the mother of her Messiah. Elizabeth cries out that Mary is blessed as well as the child in her womb. Elizabeth is the first person in the Gospels to call Jesus Lord. She knows that even the unborn child of Mary is the Messiah that they have been waiting for. Can you envision the relief on Mary's face, the relief she felt in her soul? Elizabeth's greeting must have meant the world to Mary. Now she had someone to confide in, someone to console her, someone to tell her everything is okay. God is with us. Elizabeth tells Mary that as soon as she heard Mary's voice, the child in her womb leapt for joy. Remember the child that Elizabeth will bear in three months. Time is John, John the Baptist, the one who will come before Jesus, the one God has called to prepare the way for the coming Messiah. Thus, the unborn baby hears Mary's voice and knows that the Messiah's mother is in his presence. Again, Elizabeth tells Mary that she is blessed, that she is blessed for believing the promises of God. Elizabeth has just helped transform Mary from being a frightened, doubting teenager into a joyful and excited mother-to-be. In this short passage, Elizabeth used the word blessed three times, twice for Mary and once for her child. What do you think of when you consider being blessed by God? We might think of being blessed with good fortune, gaining money or power or prestige, or we might think of having a life of comfort and ease. Mary's blessedness was not something material like wealth or power or prestige. Her blessedness came from being a part of God's plan. Mary was to be used for God, by God for God's kingdom. She was chosen by God to bear this child, the Messiah. Mary's blessedness would not be easy. She would face many challenges from the beginning of her pregnancy, telling her fiance Joseph that she was with child, to the difficulties of being the mother of the Christ child, fleeing to, Elid, to Egypt as King Herod sought to kill baby Jesus, to seeing the religious leaders seeking to destroy Jesus throughout his ministry, and finally standing by as he was crucified. This is what Mary's blessedness would be. William Barclay, a Scottish theologian, explained being blessed by God like this. God does not choose a person for ease and comfort and selfish joy but for a task that will take all that head and heart and hand can bring to it. So I ask you, are you blessed? God's blessings are not about an easy life, a comfortable life, a life of good fortune. God's blessings are about the joy of being part of God's work that we are being used by God for God's purposes and that we are not alone. We are accompanied by God's presence even when we face adversity as Mary would face throughout her life. Mary recognized God's blessedness by praising God in the second part of the passage that we read today. This is called Mary's Song or the Magnificat. 
She recognized that God was using her, a humble peasant girl from Nazareth. She understood that God's favor, that God favors and is merciful to the humble and those who fear him. Yet, God scatters the proud and pulls down the mighty from their thrones. That is the character of God. That is the character of Jesus, his son. Mary's song is a powerful reminder for all of us. God cares for those who are in need and have nothing. God calls on all those who have plenty to humble themselves, to lift others up and bless and help those in need. Friends, are you blessed? Is God using you for God's purposes? As we await the birth of Christ, let us reflect on how we might open ourselves to God's blessings, how we might enable God to work through us for the good of others. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Amen. Friends, thank you for worshiping with us. Please join me now in an attitude of prayer. Lord, we can't quite imagine what it must have been like for Mary to hear God's request and to respond unconditionally with yes. We have a tendency to put conditions on everything. We want to know what we have to do, how long this will take, what's in it for us, and what are the projected outcomes? Forgive us for our faithlessness, Lord. Slow us down and cause us to take time to really consider the wonderful ways you have always worked in our lives. As we have come before you with concerns on our hearts for our families, friends, and the world, remind us that your presence is with us and your healing love comforts and restores us. Open our hearts and ears to the cries of those in need. Let us use our talents and resources to help others. Give us courage, energy, and enthusiasm as we work for you in this world. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you.